All right, guys, in this video, we're going to show you guys how to set your products into your funnels and then set up both one step and two step order forms so that you can sell your products and your services through funnels. So I'm not going to do any funnel design here. I'm just going to show you guys the basics of how to set this up so that you can do it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So the first thing that we got to do here is we've got to have a funnel. So I'm just using a funnel template here. And once we've got the funnel template, you've got to select which page in your funnel you want to be selling the product on. So I'm just going to select the home page. We're just going to sell the product right on the home page. First thing that you have to do is you have to go into your products section right here and we need to add a product to the funnel. So let's go add product and we're going to select our custom CRM build product. And then we're going to select the price. So if you recall from the previous video, we created a price variation for this product and we've got our $5,000 option and we've got our split pay option. So I'm going to use our split pay option for this particular one. You're going to have your product name, which is going to be displayed on your order form. And then you've got your display price override, which is going to be literally whatever you put in here. But I'm just going to say this is going to be a $5,000 one time payment. Okay. You've got your additional and advanced options. So this is going to be the main product on the funnel. And then if you want to, you can allow multiple quantities to be purchased for this product. So if you turn this on, you're going to have to then put your maximum order number so we can say, hey, you can buy a hundred of these if you want. Um, and then you get to decide whether you want this product to be the main product or a bump product. In this case, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave this as the main product and we're not going to turn this on with the bump product. Now, custom authorizations. Because this product is $1,250, what custom authorizations is gonna do is it's gonna charge a small amount, whatever number you put in here, to validate the credit card before processing the full payment. So if I put $50 in here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna charge $50 on the credit card and refund it immediately. But it's gonna validate that that credit card is valid and it's legitimate and then it's going to process the main payment. So you do have to be a little bit careful here because what they're going to see on their statement is a small charge with a refund and then the main charge. If you have this number too high, you might max out their credit card on that process before they can even buy your main product. So you do have to be a little bit careful with this, um, but it will take the first installment amount and it'll hold it and be released immediately. So that's what this custom authorization amount is. Now I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to leave it off and I'm going to click save. Okay, now it wants, because I filled it in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put something in here. All right, I'm gonna put $1 in here then. We're gonna click save. Okay, so now we've got a product on the funnel. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a bump product. So let's go add product, and I'm obviously, this is not what I would actually do for a real bump product, but I'm gonna put the other product in here, and I'm gonna say the display price override is $5,000, and we're gonna make this a bump product. That's all you gotta do to make it a bump product, and then I'm gonna show you what that looks like in the funnel itself. Okay, so we've got two different products in the funnel. We've got the $1,250 five pay option and we've got the $5,000 bump product for a single pay option here. And actually, I realized that I put the wrong product description on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it. And this is gonna be a, you know, five payments of $1,250. All right, we've got our products now on that funnel page. It's very important for you to understand that you have to put it on the page where your order form is going to live. Okay. So now we're going to go back over to the overview. Now that we've got the products in here and we're going to go ahead and click edit. Now I've already taken the liberty of putting a couple of different order forms in here to show you guys what the difference is between the two. So on the left hand side here, we have a two step order form. Okay, a two step order form requires them to fill out their information, name, email, phone number, and whatever information you want on here that are default settings inside the order forms before they go to the payment page. Now, the benefit of this is that inside workflows, you have an option for order form submitted with a filter to order form submission is opt in meaning if they filled out step one, but they didn't put their credit card in and buy on step two, you have an abandoned cart sequence that you can now do through your workflows to get them to come back and buy that product. So that is what a two-step order form does. And a one-step order form is everything all on the one page. So they put in their information here and then the products are here and they can just put in their information and buy the product right away. Obviously the downside to something like this is that you don't get their information unless they buy the product. So just bear that in mind when you're deciding which one should I use, a one-step or a two-step. The biggest thing is, do you want it to be quick and painless and frictionless? 
use a one-step order form if you don't care about collecting that information ahead of time. If you want it to add a little bit of friction, maybe a little bit more serious, and then you want to have the ability to nurture them or market to them if they decide not to buy, then a two-step order form is what you should choose. Okay, so let's go and talk about the form setup. Right now, I'm selecting this two-step order form. One-step order form structure is going to be very, very similar to the two-step order form, but so I'm just going to cover this one for now. You can name the element if you want to be able to find it, scroll to it, and so on inside your funnel. You can choose the button color, so we can change that from blue to red. You can add whatever colors you want here. You can change the button text. You can change the button size, and that's going to just obviously change the styling and I am not a stylist of funnel so I'm not going to do too much here input background color that's going to be your input background color right there so if we change that to black get out of my way there we go it'll change it to black so you can really do whatever you want here to stylize these forms but I'm not going to do anything fancy here this right here this is really really important to understand button actions now on a two-step order form there's two different button actions but what this button action means is upon purchase do X okay so this go to step two button is gonna go to step two once they're on step two they're gonna go and they're gonna say you know purchase or whatever the case may be that is what this button action is gonna do so if you're using a regular funnel where you've got a purchase and then you've got a thank you page or you've got an upsell page you're gonna want to use the sale action of go to next step within this funnel whereas if you've got like a one-off purchase funnel that you want to go to a different website after they've purchased then you can come in here and you can select go to website URL. Okay. If you're a really good, you know, funnel designer and funnel builder, and you want to say use conditional logic based on which funnel they bought a product from, and then you want them to go to a different thank you page based on where they bought inside your funnel, you can then go to select a step and then you can select which other page you want them to go to upon purchasing. So that's what your button actions do here on the order forms. I'm going to go over to advanced now and we're going to talk about how to set up and structure your form. Okay, so you've got step number one, which is the information collection. By default, it's going to show shipping and your info. So I've already changed this to your info, but whatever you type in here is going to show up right up here. Same thing with your subheadline. Everything you type in here is going to show up right underneath here. And now you have some options to toggle different information pieces on or off. So if you wanted to show company name, you would just show, show company name. And then it's going to show a company name right there. You can also change the placeholders here. So if I wanted to just do your name, I could do that. And that's going to change this inside here to your name. And then you've got your name validation and then your email address. Do you want to show or hide the phone number? So obviously it goes without saying you can show or hide phone number. And then do you want to enable country picker? So when an order form has country picker enabled, there's going to be a little drop down thing on the left hand side of the phone number where they can select their country, which will prepend and automatically put the area code of that country into the phone number form. Do you want to hide or show shipping information? So for us, we sell a lot of digital products. We don't need to know your address, so we turn that off usually. But if you're selling physical products and you need to ship them to an address, then having the address information is obviously really, really important. If you're selling to a business, a SaaS product, and you're creating a sub account, highly recommend that you turn this on so that you have their address information for setting up the sub account uh, when you sell it to them. Your button text, you can adjust, go to next step. You can change with the text here. And you can also change the footer text on this as well. Now, this main product options here, this is really important for you to understand. Enabling cart mode, what this is going to do is if you have multiple main products that you've put on your funnel for people to select. So maybe you've got different product variants of your product and you want them to be able to select multiple of them, you can do that with cart mode turned on. When cart mode is turned on, it is like a checkbox custom field where they can select multiple products and services and it's just gonna add them to the order. Whereas if you turn cart mode off, it's just gonna give them access to pick one. So it's effectively a radio button select option on your order form where they can just select one product. In this case, I've only got one product, so it doesn't really matter whether I have cart mode enabled or not. Okay, product description, you can turn that on or off and that's just gonna display the product description that you put in when you created the product. And then pricing information is just going to show the pricing information on the product line as well. Now, if you recall, I created an order bump product. Okay, um, it's not one that I would actually sell on an order bump, but it's just an example. So if you want to enable the order bump, you have to turn this on. 
And now what you can do is you can add the bump product that you added to the funnel page. So we're gonna go ahead and select the product, which was the CRM build, and then you're gonna give it a headline, custom CRM one-time payment. And then your headline here, only $5,000 one time. Get a custom CRM for your business, right? You can add an image to this. I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna upload one of the doggy wash images so that I can show you what this looks like in here. And then you can go ahead and enable by default or turn it off by default. So if you enable it by default, the checkbox is already gonna be selected when they hit this order form. And so they will have to choose to unselect it if they don't wanna buy it. Otherwise, turning it off, they have to check the box off if they do want to buy it. So let's go ahead and hit save. Do you want to enable coupon codes on your order form. If you do, they can put in the coupon codes and get a discount. Do you want to enable terms and conditions if you turn that on? Guess what? Same thing as all of the other terms and conditions that we've done before. You're just going to hyperlink this and add your terms and conditions page on here. Um, highly recommend this, especially if you're selling you know, SaaS services that you have a terms and conditions for the purchase saying, hey, by purchasing, you are agreeing to these terms. They have to do that. And I highly, highly, highly recommend that you turn that on if you're selling SaaS services. All right, sticky contact turned on. So if they're coming from another funnel page to this page, sticky contact on will allow their contact information to auto-populate. Whatever contact information you already have is gonna auto-populate on the order form. And if you have that turned off, then obviously they've gotta fill in their details themselves for that. New contact on every purchase. Now this is something that is extremely important if you're using the SaaS configurator, okay? If you're using the SaaS configurator, you need to turn this on. If you don't turn this on, then your SaaS product, when it gets purchased, will not create a SaaS account inside your agency. So if you're using the SaaS configurator, please, 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 please turn this on. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Validate disposable email. That's going to validate the email for you. And then your visibility is going to be whether you want this visible on both desktop and mobile or not. And then I won't cover this until we talk about different funnel settings. Now, step two is going to be where you are going to set up your mostly your headlines and subheadlines. This dynamic item is gonna be available with the products that you put into the funnel, so you don't really have to worry too, too much about that. But you'll notice that the bump product is shown up here and you've got your coupon code. So this is gonna show you what the whole page is gonna look like. And then you can kind of make some small adjustments here. Sale action, select a step or go to next step in the funnel, which is what I would typically do. Um, but this button action is the exact same as step one. So you don't have to worry too much about that. All right, let's go ahead and click save and let's see what what this order form actually looks like with the products on it. So we're just gonna go and view it and we can fill out step one. So we're gonna go RM marketing and we're gonna say Joe Blow, Joe at blow.com and we're gonna put in a random number and then full address, one, two, three, fake street in Calgary, doesn't exist, in Canada, in Alberta. And we're gonna do a random postal code and then I have to agree to the terms and conditions before I can go to step two. All right, so now we're at step two. So we can now edit, well, I guess we can, because we don't have cart mode turned on, this is literally the only option that we have. If we had cart mode turned on in multiple products, then we would be able to select multiple products. We had quantity turned on when we added the product to the funnel, so I can come in here and I can change the quantity. I could say I want five of those. And then if I wanted to add the bump product, I can add the bump product and that's automatically gonna adjust the pricing down here. So if I say I want the bump, it's going to add the bump to the build. I don't know why I would do that, but hey, I'm doing it anyways. And then you've got your card, you've got your Google Pay, and then you're gonna put your card number in, complete the order, and then they're gonna to go to the next step. Now, you'll notice on the one step order form, it's a little bit different in the sense that I just have to put my information in and then my credit card information in and I complete the order from here. But the setup of a one step order form is exactly the same as a two step, just without the second step. So there you go, guys. That's how you take your products and you put them into a funnel using the one step and two step order forms inside High Level. Hey guys, I hope you found that video useful and helpful for you getting your company 
set up in high level and getting your white label started with the high level ecosystem. Now, if you're just starting out your journey in the high level ecosystem, or maybe you're even an intermediate um, or consider yourself an expert that just wants to know a little bit more about the high level platform and how you can leverage it, I would encourage you to go and click the link in the description below this video and hop into our GHL Mastery program. What do we do inside of our GHL Mastery program? Well, we have five calls every single day of the week, Monday through Friday for two hours a day, where we actually help you get into your system, help you build, help you troubleshoot, and just overall help elevate your overall skill set on the high level platform. So if you're interested in getting hands on every single day support plus, a couple of bonus goodies, snapshots, AI systems, the like, then go ahead and click the link below to join our GHL Mastery VIP group. And I promise you, you will learn more in one month than you will in six months doing this on your own. We will see you in the next one. Take care.